This is Diglis Weir, and this is one of the most remarkable fish passes in the world. From down here below the weir, you can actually see the two metre height difference, and that is what fish wanting to work the way upstream to spawn used to have to try and negotiate fish like the salmon we now know that at the back end of the year autumn time they used to wait for when the river was at a higher level flood water is in here that would obviously reduce that height and that would enable fish like the salmon to work their way further upstream however just a few years ago this installation was created and this now allows up to 25 different species of fish to work their way upstream to their natural spawning grounds. We've come along here today beside the beautiful River Severn to have a look at how salmon are able to negotiate this two metre high weir. We've seen lots of different fish passes up and down the country on smaller rivers, but we've never really seen anything quite on this scale. We've got special access to take a closer look at this 100 metre long fish pass to have a look at its design and to take a closer look at what types of species of fish are actually moving through this pass on the way upstream to their natural spawning grounds. Well, we're here with Rick. Good morning, Rick. Morning. Thanks very much for looking after us today. Can you just quickly summarise? I mean, you're, you're a volunteer, aren't you? I am a volunteer, but I'm also a senior engineer full-time for Canal River Trust at the moment, and I volunteer my time to come here and tell people all about this fantastic project that Canal River Trust have put together. You can see it over his shoulder now. What an incredible, it's an unbelievable bit of engineering. Can you just summarise for us, please, Rick, what the actual dimensions are, just to put it into reality for everyone? It, it is the probably the deepest vertical slot fish pass in the country. It's eight metres wide, five metres deep, and 100 metres long. There are 10 what we call sea sections in the middle of it, so the water will drop 20 centimetres for each section. So it allows a fish to come up and pass around the weir, uh, which was put into place in 1844. And this has allowed the migratory twait shad to come back and rediscover uh, its spawning grounds, which has not been able to get there for the last 180 odd years. I will play admit that I had never heard of a twait shad. Why have we heard of it? Is it a, is it a rare fish or is it, is it specific to, to this river? It is a specific probably to this river and the River Wye. There are other types of shad, the Alice shad, but in this area, it was a food fish. It's part of the herring family. And it was incredibly popular. People used to come here and they'd fish the river and they would live off this fish. They'd eat nothing else. But then the uh, weirs were put in to aid industry because the Industrial Revolution was underway, which is why they put the weirs in to get the boats up but the shad cannot swim up the weir aprons. Salmon love it, but all the other fish, like barbel, perch, and the rest of them, they can't do it. So as you can see, as the water travels through these chambers, it drops two meters over the space of 100 meters. Each chamber is designed to hold the water bike around the edges and down the center by creating slacks where the fish can hole up before they decide to push into the flow and move into the next chamber. If you take a closer look at the design, we've actually got water that's running freely down either side through two different channels. That is uninterrupted water, and the reason for that is because the water passing through the fish pass slows down so much that when it exits the fish pass at the bottom end below the weir, the designers didn't want to create too much dead water. They wanted the water to still be flowing, therefore encouraging the fish to move up and through the pass. They are um, repeat spawners, 
So they can come back uh, by up to five times during their right. lifetime. Right. So they'll come up, they'll spend about a month in the river. Uh, they'll come up, they go up to Shrewsbury, around that sort of area, uh, do the spawning in May, which is the time when the river um, temperatures uh, meet their requirements for movement. And then they'll get back down and get out. You've got to remember, they do not eat whilst they're up in the river, the same as salmon. One of the special features to this fish pass is the actual viewing gallery. Now this is used for tours, but it's also used for scientific purposes as well. This viewing gallery is right where the water first comes into the fish pass. And this huge window allows people to watch fish actually moving through the pass itself. There's even a motion activated camera on this window, which triggers every time any fish move through and past the viewing window. There are also sensors throughout the fish pass that triggers any pre-tagged fish moving through the pass that can obviously help scientists to understand the fish movements. We were even fortunate enough to spot a salmon just about to make its way through the pass. It just moved in front of the main viewing window, then dropped back just out of sight. But they do say that when salmon move through this pass, they do move through very, very slowly. This has been an incredible insight into what these kind of projects mean, not only to the people that work here, but to the river, to the fish, to the environment, and to everybody who enjoys our local environment. Hopefully you'd like to see more insights like this, and if you do, please give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to follow the channel for more videos like this. So thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.